on a new car and you must spend twenty four dollars? Yes. Okay, you need to tell me the secret because clearly I'm not doing something right. <laughs> at all because this car is nice. You're watching the right video. <laughs> Right. Listen, I grew up taking a bus. So in this episode, I want to show it to you how I drive this Rolls Royce Ghost for 24 bucks a month. How? Let me break it down to you in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook, a downtown western suburb of Chicago. And uh, we're here at the Seven Figure Squad studio. Yes, the Money Smart Guy owns a suit. It's been a while since we actually put on a suit uh, this whole pandemic year. It's been a while since we put on some good clothes. So, you like that Rolls Royce, huh? You like that Rolls Royce ghost? Yes. So, uh, I'm, I'm fired up about this episode. This is our last episode of Vlogmas 2020, where we combined vlogs and Christmas and put, put them together in the YouTube community. We created something called Vlogmas, and that means we put an episode every day from the 1st of December to the 24th of December to share some value with you in three things. Number one, how to help you win the rules in a money game, improve, increase your game in terms of financial literacy. Number two, create some income strategies for you so therefore you can increase your money game, your income game, have some income insurance for 2021. And number three, how to build and grow your own personal and leadership style as an entrepreneur, as somebody that's leading your family. Uh, uh, these type of videos here were, uh, were subject matters of our Vlogmas 2020. So. Uh, I'm fired up about this one because, listen, I grew up taking a bus. I, uh, my first car was a 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. <laughs> Let's show a quick photo of that real quick. There's a 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. I bought that after my first combat deployment coming back from deployment overseas. And uh, we had cash. The only, the only thing I had was, I think, maybe two or $3,000. I went down to the dealership, bought it with cash. And uh, that was it. That was my first ride. That was my first ride of my life at 19 years old. Anyway, make a long story short, I'm in Orange County, right? I'm in, I'm in Camp Pendleton. I'm in San Clemente. I'm in San Diego County. And I'm realizing a lot of people have nice things, nice homes, nice cars. I'm like, how do I get this type of stuff? And then I'm going to purchase my cars. I come back from another, another deployment. And these guys, say, hey, you can buy a new Jeep, you know, a Cherokee Jeep. Grand Cherokee. It's like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger, blah, 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 blah. I says, I deserve... I deserve a nice ride. I deserve this. I just came back from the deployment. I deserve a new whip, right? Anyway, after the deployment in the military, guess what we find in a parking lot? Guess what we find in a parking lot outside of our barracks? Guess what we find outside in the parking lot, outside of our unit when we come back from a combat deployment, any deployment? Because we had stacked the cash. We had non-taxable pay. What do you find? Brand new cars. And there's a big reason why myself and other Marines that I was deployed with were broke when we left the military. Yes. And uh, I said, man, there's a problem behind that. And so I'm going to assume a few things. I'm going to assume a few things. I'm going to assume that you like nice things in life, okay? I'm going to assume that instead of driving a, a, a normal car, whatever you want to call it, that you'd rather drive a luxury or an exotic car. I'm going to assume that. No, you're not being judged because you like nice things. But, hey, listen, if there's nice things out there in life, it's available to you. It's just a matter of how you get to it. Because I wouldn't want you thinking that, man, how do I afford it? I can never afford it. I can never afford it. I can never afford it. No. The better thinking is, how can I afford it? In my opinion, if you're going to work hard, you deserve to have nice things. You deserve to enjoy with the best that life has to offer. So how do I buy my Rolls Royce and pay 24 bucks a month to this? I'm going to assume a couple of assumptions. Number one, you've done your job to establish good credit, excellent credit. Yes, credit. Guys, I'm the worst at credit. When I came out the military, I think I had a 400, 500 credit score. That's correct. I've got, I still got, right here my office, I still have my bankruptcy papers from 1996 when I filed Chapter 7 bankruptcy in Orange County, California, because I was messed up with the rules of the money game. I was horrible. I wanted nice things, but, I, but my execution about it was absolutely wrong. My money game was all over the place. My military game, tight. Money game, horrific. 
over time, I learned that credit was a very, 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 very important thing in America to have, to obtain, to protect, to build. You know, oftentimes people say, you know, credit is, ca uh, credit is crap. Credit is, is the death of you. But there's certain incentives in America, there's certain incentives according to the IRS code that there's a financial incentive through tax deductions that if you borrow, they'll give you tax deductions. So for example, for many of you, student loans, right? Student loan interest, tax deductible. Certain things you buy, tax deductible, just not cars if you're just an employee. So as a credit score, I'm gonna, let me break that down here in a second. Credit score, I'd like to see you around a 680, 720, 800 credit score. That means you possibly got to build credit. I built credit when I uh, filed bankruptcy. I built credit. I rebuilt my credit with a secured credit card. I got a credit card for 500 bucks, paid them $500. And over a six month period, I show I charged something, paid it off, charged something, paid it off, charged something, paid it off. And then six months with that particular bank at that particular year, they gave me back my $500 or gave me the opportunity to extend my credit from $500 credit limit to a $1,000 credit limit if I kept my $500 there. Either way, I built credit. I started boosting my credit from 400. 500, low 600s, establish credit history, establish many different forms of credit. And here, let me share with you one of my things that blew my mind away, that blew my mind away when we started making money. Because the second thing I want to assume is you also are having a cash flow business that you have no problem with making money, that you have a consistent income through your job, or more importantly, a consistent income through your business, because that's actually the premise of this. That you have a consistent income through a business, that you're an actual entrepreneur. I don't care if you're part-time or full-time, that you're an actual entrepreneur and you make cash flow through your trade or business, okay? You're working for yourself, you got a business, okay? These couple things. Here's a crazy part, here's a crazy mistake. We uh, follow the route of don't borrow, don't borrow, don't borrow, don't borrow. C credit is bad. Cash, cash, cash. And, that, you know, I, I was divided on that, that type of thinking until I went to go borrow money to buy a car. And here's the a, here's a crazy part, which goes into number three. We had the capital to buy a Rolls Royce cash. We got that much tucked away in the bank. We made money. We didn't spend money. We made money. Didn't spend money. We saved it, saved it, saved it, saved it. Boom. We built capital. That's why this whole PPP type loan, whether it's the first stimulus check or the second stimulus plan, we didn't need it because we have cash in the bank. We didn't lay off anybody. In fact, we went the opposite. We grew by 43% as a company and we actually added jobs to our staff, to our operations center and to our social media content creation team and to our uh, uh, local experts, attorneys, CPAs, smart people, a lot more smarter than we are. We understood that we didn't want our capital to be deployed. In other words, we could have bought this Rolls Royce with cash straight up, but what's the downside to that? The downside to that, I would lose what they call the TVM, time value of money. I would lose the opportunity to earn rate of return on that money, access to that money, liquidity to that money. I would lose in what we call an opportunity cost. There is a cost for deploying money and not being able to control or earn a rate of return on that money. So I wanted to retain my capital. I wanted to keep my capital. So I like the Rolls Royce because <laughs> I'm gonna fit in a Lamborghini, you know? I'm, I'm six foot three, I don't fit in a Lamborghini. My, my knees are here, my, my head's hitting the, uh, the roof. If it wasn't, one time we rented, uh, we rented a, a, a Lamborghini in Vegas, beautiful car, is a, a green Huracan, beautiful car. Oh my gosh, I can't, can't forget how the car sound. Just, just boom, just love it. I don't have it, my son has it, check out this video. Right, uh, check out this video, my son got the Lamborghini between the two of us. So a brand new Ghost starts at $314,000. Brand new Ghost starts at $314,000. So the question now is, do I buy new or do I buy used? If I ask you, right, let, me, let me show you a picture. Let me show you a picture of my Rolls Royce right now. Okay, take a look at this picture. What year do you think my Rolls Royce Ghost is? Drop it in the comment section below. What year do you think my Rolls Royce Ghost? Drop it in the comment section below. I wanna know what you're thinking. I wanna see, all the car experts are probably watching this, right? You probably know just by looking at the headlights. For, but the common person, for the folks that, like myself who grew up driving a bus, for the folks like myself who had a Chevy or an Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, what year do you think this Rolls Royce Ghost is? Want to know? Drum roll, please. It's 2010. It's 2010. It's 10 years old as a recording of this video. I purchased it from a former NBA player, Raymond Felton, who played in the NBA for 14 years. He was the last owner of this vehicle. 
And through the car dealership, I purchased a car. Now it's in my garage. It's used to somebody else, but it's new to me. And guess what? I didn't pay three fourteen dollars for it. Guess what I paid for it? Blue, uh, Kelly Blue Book, there's many different offers. Remember, I was waiting. I was patient. That's the difference between wanting a car and then just being haphazard about being emotional about buying a car. The Blue Book was at one thirty. I was able to find it for $100,000 with 34,000 miles on it. I purchased a 314 valued car at $100,000, less than one third of the brand new car price. That's why with cars like this, it might make sense to buy used. I did, it's used to somebody else, it's new to me. So the difference between, think about this, the difference between buying a brand new car and buying a used car, some people say, well, I just don't want to worry about the maintenance, Matt. Well, during the meantime, guess what? The difference between what someone would pay brand new for this, what's a brand new car payment on a $314,000 car? You're looking about a four, five thousand dollar, three, four, five thousand dollar car payment. I'll tell you what my car payment here is in a second. I bought a three hundred fourteen thousand dollar car for hundred thousand dollars. Check this out, though. This is where it gets juicy. I recommend, I recommend you read this book, How to Lower Your Taxes Big Time. Okay, I interviewed the author Sandy Botkin about uh, about a couple years ago when uh, Trump took over as the president, and he installed the Tra Trump Cuts Jobs Act. And uh, one of the sections of his book, number five, is how to turn your car into a tax-deductible gold mine. Chapter number five. Would you like to turn your car into a tax-deductible gold mine? Let me break it down how it applies to me. So I took these uh, numbers. I ran it through my CPA, ran it through my finance guy. I said, okay, I got the credit, got the cash. I definitely have the cash flow. <laughs> the weird part, I, I can't believe I'm saying this again. I'm a cash flow millionaire, but I didn't have the credit to buy this car because I didn't have it established on my credit report. It's like crazy, it's crazy how if you don't show it on your credit report, the bank doesn't care how much money you make or how much money you have in the bank. The bank doesn't care. Listen, I can buy this car cash. It doesn't matter. If it's not on your credit report, we're not giving you the loan. Anyway, I decided to use this fancy strategy called OPM, other people's money. Okay? So I asked the bank, hey, cut a check for $100,000 to this dealership so I can now be the new owner of this car. Correct? Yes. So using other people's money, I use a bank, and since I didn't have any established credit with this type of loan amount, I had to put down a hefty down payment of $37,000, $37,700 to be exact. I had the capital, so instead of using my $100,000, I just took $37,700 of that, and, my dif and the difference is still invested in my savings, my investments, my brokerage account, still earning me a rate of return, and more importantly, it's still liquid. If an opportunity came up, I got cash and capital to do it. I don't have to sell my car, take the cash from selling the car, and then and buy whatever I needed to buy or invest what I needed to invest. I already got the money liquid. Not my full $100,000 is deployed into this depreciating asset. Okay. So my down payment is $37,700. Oh, man, that's a lot of money. You might as well buy a brand new car. I know. I could have bought a, uh, you know, a typical car, cash with this type of stuff, but I want to drive a Rolls Royce, man. So... Putting things into perspective, my payment on a monthly basis is eight hundred sixty-four dollars. So I have to still pay to the, I still have to pay to the bank eight hundred sixty-four dollars. Well, Matt, you told me at the beginning of this video it's twenty-four dollars a month. Let me continue. So I put a down payment of thirty-seven thousand seven hundred dollars. On an annual basis, I pay to the bank ten thousand eight eighty-one, which is eight sixty-four times twelve. I think it's plus a four hundred ninety-five dollar licensing fee. So I got out, I'm out that year, this $47,000, uh, $47,000, $48,000. Okay, well, Matt, doesn't sound like a good deal. Well, guess what? When you're building wealth, it's for the long game. And this is a part where Sandy Bakken says in his book, how to turn your car into a tax-deductible gold mine. Here's the next assumption. You cannot do this as a W-2 only employee. So if you have a job, you can't do what I'm about to share with you right now. But if you have a side business, I didn't say you have to do your business full time. I'm just saying according to the IRS, they say as long as you establish some form of trade or business, you can now unlock another side of the tax code for you because you are a generator. You are a creator of jobs. You generate revenue that can cycle throughout the community through people, through businesses. That's why we give you, IRS says, we give you significant tax breaks. I'm like, oh, snap, cool. And by the way, I don't have a college degree. I just happen to have 
common sense to talk to people a lot smarter than me. So the cool thing about this is this down payment, I can amortize. In other words, I can use the deductions of this $37,500 over a five-year period. I think the fancy word is a, either a bonus depreciation or maker's, de, maker's deduction, M-A-C-R-S. So I can, I, can, I, can, I can write this off and amortize over one year period, two year period, three, four, five. So therefore I can deduct 7,540 the first year, 7,540 the second year, so on and so on and so on, okay? So this I can deduct over a five year period of time. This top number here is what I'm paying to the bank every year. This number here is a combination of what I pay out and the deduction, the tax deduction that I can use in my tax return. In other words, you guys are thinking, okay, Matt, you paid out $11,000, but I can still use a portion of this $37,700 as a deduction in year one, a portion of the deduction in year two, a portion of the deduction in year three. So my total deduction, in addition to the payment I paid to the bank, a total deduction in year one, 18783 Total deduction in year two, 17292 so on and so forth, right? Last year, 16,147 total deduction, even though on a monthly basis, I paid out $864 a month. So what does that all add up to? Here's, here's, a crazy, here's a crazy part. Here's where it gets really, really sexy. So I outflow, I paid out $37,700. I also pay out 10,444 on average per year. My total annual payments over a five-year period totals to 50220 50220 So I've paid in combination of these two amounts. I paid out a total of 87920 That's the down payment and what I pay on a monthly basis. However, the tax deductions that I'm able to have in my tax return is 86437 So I can deduct 86437 and by the way, just heads up, if I haven't done so already, I'm not a tax advisor, I'm not a financial advisor, run this through your tax professional to make sure it applies to your numbers, to your situation. The two big factors that I've been educated on through my CPA over the period of years has been bonus depreciation and section 179 maker's depreciation. These are the two things that I've been aware of and educated to be somewhat understandable about what's going on with my money. And so when we're putting this through, if you take what I've paid out and you subtract about what the tax deductions are that I can have with this car, my total net outflow is $1,483. So I've paid out, check this out, I've paid out then net $1,483, but if you put that over a 60 month period, five years, that breaks down to $24 a month. So my net payment for all this is 1,483 over a five year period, which you break down over 60 months, which is five years, breaks down to 24 bucks a month. <laughs> Here's a cool part. What do you think I can get for my car? Let's say I wanted to sell my car in 2023. I get bored with it. Let's say I want to sell this car in 2025 when this is all done. What do you think I can get for a Rolls Royce Ghost in 2025, a 15 year old car? Let's take a look at this. I could buy a 20, I could buy a 2005, which is a different car I know. I could buy a 2005 Rolls Royce Phantom for $150,000. Look at these numbers. You could buy a 2005, 2006, 2007 Rolls Royce Phantom, which, which, which is of course is the bigger car in the Rolls Royce family, but they're still selling it at $150,000 15 years later. Now no, the car I drive is not as robust as a Rolls Royce Phantom, it's a Rolls Royce Ghost, but what do you think I can sell a formerly $314,000 car in the Rolls Royce family, which is a limited type of car, because I think the number was uh, Toyota, sent, you know, they, they, they make millions of Toyota Camrys, Toyotas a year, but they only make per model 6,000 Rolls Royce per model per year. So these cars are very rare and scarce. So what does that mean to supply and demand? That these cars over time, not only potentially may become more valuable, it depends on how long you hold on to it, but they retain their value a little bit better than your typical Chevy Cavalier. Well, ask yourself this question. What's the typical car payment that most people have in America? What's the typical payment most people have in America? You know, another, I think the number was 550 bucks, somewhere around there. The average car payment in America is around 550 bucks, 
which for most people is the second largest outflow bill payment they have on a monthly basis, and I think around $2 trillion of total car loans in America today. If you can shift your payment from just being a W-2 employee and just add entrepreneurship to your game, start a side business. I started a side business when I was in the military. I got involved in the insurance industry. Been doing that for now going on 22 years. But start a side business, 1099, self-employed before you become a business owner. It's up to you. But you just, you can't do this as a, what I just talked about, you cannot do this as a W-2 employee. This does not apply to you. It does apply to you even if you are a part-time entrepreneur or you're a 1099 independent contractor. But back to my original question. In 2023, 2024, what do you think I can sell a ghost for? I'm just gonna say 50 grand. One third of what a Rolls Royce Phantom would go for today, 50,000 bucks. I put down, I put down $37,700 as a down payment. I was able to deduct that over a five year period and able to capture that back, assuming I sell this car for just $50,000. And what do you think I'm gonna do with that $50,000? Man, I've been eyeballing this Rolls Royce Cullinan. it. you see that SUV? It's bad, it's lovely. This car is bad, that's on my radar screen. So I'm thinking about taking this $50,000 and applying it to a Rolls Royce Cullinan SUV two, three, four, five years from now. See, you can get what you want in life. You just got to figure out how to get there. And as I wrap up, guys, you know, there's many different things I just threw at you. Probably just went over your head. Digest this for a minute. Buy the book. Lower your taxes big time. Go to the link here in the description center. Buy, in the description area, go buy the book. Educate yourself and make yourself aware. Before I wrap up, I want to share two videos with you. What was it like? Am I the only one doing this? No. Take a look at this video. The delivery of our Rolls Royce goes earlier this year in January, February of 2020, before the pandemic. And not only am I doing it, we have a whole office full of people that we're coaching and mentoring directly and indirectly. They're doing just the same too as well. They're upgrading their lifestyle because first of all, they're upgrading their credit, they're upgrading their cash flow, and they're upgrading their access to their own capital without borrowing it from another source. They can retain their cash, Leveraging OPM when it's appropriate and suitable, not overextending themselves. The other video I want you to watch too as well is how millionaires use taxes as an asset versus a liability. That being said, guys, I hope some of these things you can impart in 2021. Drop your follow-ups and questions in the comments section below. <laughs> I probably blew some of you guys' mind away. I know my mind was blown away. Just understand, there's two tax systems. There's two tax systems. One for the informed, and one for the uninformed. In 2021, if you want a financial breakthrough in 2021, I hope that you become informed. That being said, guys, hope you took some notes and I hope to leave. And by the way, if you've upgraded your car, send, send, send me what you upgraded to. Let me know what type of car you purchased. Tag me, Money Smart Guy. Send me a tag on Instagram. Let me know. I'll reshare with you with my followers too as well. I just want to see you win and living your best life possible and you mastering the financials of your life and win the money game in 2021. With that being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy. If you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to click subscribe and hit notifications next time we upload our next episode. Well, this has been a wrap for Vlogmas Series 2020. It's been a joy. A lot of things have been revealed to us and hopefully a lot of things have been revealed to you, thought, things that we never thought would come our way. This is an amazing exercise for us, an amazing series and campaign for us. I look forward to seeing you and seeing more of you in 2021. That being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. And be money smart today. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.